Next, we humbly welcome Dr. Agneta Golan to share her views on the topic preterm brain injury. She is a neonatology consultant from Israel. She did her education from Ben Gurion University. Her research interests are neonatal neurology and has numerous publications to her name. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this conference. Um, I also have an old picture. I have a different color. And I also got much more mature, I would say, since this picture was taken. Uh, it's my first time in India. And um, I must confess that I feel that I am falling in love uh, for your beautiful country. Um, me and Dr. Elon Shani work together in the same department. And I'm a retired neonatologist now, and he became the boss of the unit I used to run for 40 years. Um, I will give you a short talk about some quality improvement methodology regarding the brain uh, and brain injury. <clears throat> um, outline of my talk will be covering a little bit of the burden of the disease, some of the big uh, databases existing in Europe and uh, INEO and Israel, QI methodology and the bundle for IVH prevention, the results of some quality improvement studies which were present in the literature now and what challenges Q QI project present for us. Intraventricular hemorrhage is not a secret that it's a very devastating disease for infants less than 34 weeks. It's a multifactorial disease, and many of them, 30 to 40 percent of them, uh, is the percentage of the infants suffer from this disease below 1500 gram. We do not have treatment, good treatment, when it already occurs, but we do have developed and understood some of the prevent prevention opportunities. Um, the late uh, uh, the outcome of the infants with severe IVH is devastating. 40% of them uh, having neuro, neuromotor developmental delay, uh, cognitive problems, cerebral palsy, and some uh, hearing and um, blindness issues. So we have all the um, incent to try to prevent this devastating disease. Um, the disease occurs very early after birth. In the first three days of life, we have 70% uh, of the events occur before the age of three days. So any intervention should be around this time before three days and even before delivery. Uh, INEO is a, study, is a study collaboration group between uh, different countries uh, who have a large database, uh, including Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Israel, Japan, Spanish, Sweden, and they uh, collaborated together in order to uh, uh, initiate quality improvement uh, in neonates. And this study actually showed us very interesting results that different countries have extraordinarily wide difference of incidence of different disease. And as you can see, the IVH in Japan is only 4%, I mean, in between 24 and 30, 31 weeks. And in countries like Israel, and uh, we have 12%. So this, probably if we would take India also, you will find uh, huge differences between different areas of different disease. And this um, wild um, incidence is not only in IVH, it's also in other disease. So this insight into why would this be? Is it, uh, what is the reason for such a big differences? So even uh, uh, when you look at different gestational ages, um, at the 28 weeks, which one is the pointer? Okay, so even in the, the red line uh, shows uh, the Israel, which shows that uh, at 24 weeks we have 40% IVH grade 3 and 4, and other countries like Japan are here as low as 10%. So these discrepancies we want uh, to understand and maybe do something about it. Um, what interesting was that this uh, um, uh, organization sent us questionnaires out to all of these uh, countries and filled in a lot of variables and we actually could see that the variation of practices in different units is extraordinarily high. This is, for instance, what would be the indication for intubation and you can see that some countries, the blue one, uh, 
shows uh, that the oxygen concentrations was between 30 and 40 percent, and uh, uh, countries like Finland would wait until uh, 80 percent, 80 percent of the units, sorry, are intubating between 40 and 50 percent. So the variation between the units, the practices, uh, are very, very big between the countries. Also, uh, looking at delayed core clamping, there are countries, and you you have you see my arrows up. There are countries which do not practice delay core clamping, and these countries are not necessarily the ones who have high incidence of intraventricular hemorrhage. And there are others who are doing uh, much higher, like uh, uh, um, in Switzerland, and uh, they have a high uh, practice of, uh, of uh, delayed core cramping. Also, um, this database uh, enabled us to see that even when a protocol or a, a research study is presented, not all the units change their practice uh, immediately. Sometimes it takes many years until the units pick up a change in the, pro in the practice. So the big circle shows how many units did change the practice between 205 and 209, and how many on the same variable would change much, much later, much, much later. And then it would be these variables put us a big question about when you conduct a multi-center study, how all these differences between the hospitals and departments influence outcome studies of these big studies. The questionnaire also addressed the issue of how many in-house uh, uh, neonatal neonatologists are in the unit at all times, and also we could see that in uh, the Toscany area, 100% of the time, there is an in-house neonatologist, and other countries, uh, it's much lower, like 27%. So would this influence any outcome of the, our babies? Also, uh, uh, data on a single room availability, and it's a very interesting look at what is uh, big differences between countries and also units inside one specific country. So in Israel, we also have a big uh, neonatal database, which has 26 all the neonatal departments in Israel are in this database, and we are collecting data on about 96 variables from 1994, and this is an opportunity to get feedback how you're doing compared to the whole country, and how it has also, of course, research opportunities and to implement quality improvement uh, national uh, on a national basis. We all get this kind of graphs which show the, the point in the graph which show where your own center is compared to the average of the country and uh, for instance, a uh, uh, cesarean section, this is the uh, numbers from my own hospital, show that we have much less cesarean sections than the average in the country. So um, on this basis, the Israeli Neonatal Society took five big issues like uh, uh, IVH, uh, sepsis, and uh, feeding, and they actually designed projects in which we might want to improve and uh, um, uh, identify the points, uh, the driver, uh, key driver, which will be important to implement changes uh, before birth, uh, during the birth, or in the neonatal care. And actually, at the present, we are running two issues, the issue of uh, um, sepsis, prevention of sepsis, uh, called Touch Zero, and uh, Protect My Brain, the IVH prevention. So usually when we take a um, change in our um, our practice in our unit, we want a big uh, double-blind uh, control trial and then uh, evidence-based. This is a motto of most of our practice, but those studies are very slow and very uh, takes a long time. And as I showed you, the variability inside the hospitals is very influencing probably those results. So the other way we do is we use the expert opinions and have protocols protocols, uh, trying to have guidelines, we train our people for what we want them to do, and we do benchmarking going to the centers where we see good results of some of the variables. But uh, the development of, quant of quality improvement projects uh, becomes more and more um, a common, uh, take, picked up by nurses and nurse practitioners on small and big topics, trying to improve some of the variables. Um, I um, have to see it, say, say that the data collection is very important. Everybody has to have the same definition and very meticulous data on all the infants in order to have results. 
So the QI methodology has a few steps. One is to decide which is the problem that you want to work on, assemble a multidisciplinary team on the problem that you uh, encounter, uh, conduct an evidence-based literature review and take the best practices and protocols, develop clinical practice guidelines, determine measurements and data collection, uh, implement a plan and then uh, measure it and present it to your, um, this is a, the Ishikawa um, fishbone, which would help you uh, identify all the variables on a certain topic. If you want to improve intraventricular hemorrhage, you want to uh, identify all the possible multifactorial factor of that disease. Also, the key driver diagram is another methodology is just to help you up, chop up the problem and identify which kind of intervention you would like to implement in that specific disease. So for the interventricular hemorrhage, we have did, done this key diagram showing the prenatal care interventions such as antenatal steroid, uh, the use of mag mag magnesium, the treatment and prevention of chorioamnonitis and mode of delivery. For the delivery room issues, the delayed core clamping, debriefing before, after the resuscitation, temperature control and resuscitation team, those are the topics approached uh, in this uh, uh, issue. NICU care includes the way of ventilation, the way we treat PDA, surfactant, nutrition, infectious control, the limits of PCO2, the use of indomethacin, and all these practices have to be decided whether we want to approach it, we want to do it, and then make sure we do it. And of course, the nursing care, which includes minimal handling, head position, pain and pain and uh, stress and blood withdrawal uh, methodology. Uh, you also have to present the data to your team, and this is a histogram which would show uh, the temperature of the percentage of babies arriving with hypothermia in your unit. And you can see that uh, at a certain date, when the the heating bags were introduced, the percentage of babies who got in the unit hypothermic uh, was much less, and almost 80 to 90 percent, uh, 90 to 100 percent had normal temperature. And whenever you you um, you um, identify a, a date when these numbers are getting again dropping like the third line over there that we could see that something happened. I can't do it. So you can see that, um, can I do it with a pointer here? No, it can't. Okay, so um, this is when you have to identify what happened and do actually uh, inquiry the root analysis of why these babies arrived hypothermic and ask the five why questions. Why did the baby arrive hypothermic? Um, the answer is because there was no plastic bag. The second one would be there was no plastic bag because somebody didn't order. And why didn't they order? Because, uh, and so on. And the five questions until you really get to the root of the problem, because this is the only way to, you can solve it. So five whys is what you do when you have a failure of the intervention. You want all the babies to be normal thermic. This is an example of uh, a result of a why question. Uh, we got uh, uh, antenatal steroids were very low, only um, um, the many women arrived and did not get steroids. And when we analyzed the uh, um, women who did not get the, the steroids, we found that 70% uh, of them actually arrived to the hospital less than 24 hours before birth. So then we understood that in order to uh, implement another act, plan, do, study, circle, and this is a methodology of quality improvement, you would approach outside the hospital in order to do something about either education or giving antenatal steroids before those women uh, arrive from remote areas to our hospital. So this is a kind of analysis you do when you fail. Why those women did not get antenatal steroids? And the histograms shown in the unit are very important in the different bundles that you pick up. And this is, you, you, can, you can see the different bundles about the delayed cord clamping and how um, uh, 
I can't use the pointer. Anyway, uh, the different bundles would show in each quarter how a specific bundle is doing and the staff has to see it. So we can see that minimal handling is fine. Uh, volume guarantee is 100% of the babies receive volume guarantees. A normal temperature is also doing well. And we see that antenatal steroids, we still are only at the 60% of the mothers receiving antenatal steroids. So something has to be done in this area. The control charts are the way to show to the uh, to show how we are doing uh, when the intervention is there we, we have the the midline uh, which the the um, row the number that we want to achieve and when an intervention is implemented we can see the drop in incidence of the specific variable that we are uh, um, dealing with and this is also something that the team has to see because we have to keep the motivation of the team to do that kind of uh, uh, work Work. When you do a multicenter study, then you can see that although in Israel we have this project implemented, some centers are doing very well and other centers are doing less well. As you can see in the upper part, it's a unit who has doing well and the other one is not doing so well. So we can go do benchmarking in that specific unit that is having better results than another unit. So uh, the key elements of a success of a QIM uh, um, project is an openness of a, a unit to do change, believe it is possible, discipline and adherence to the protocol is, is uh, very important, and regular case discussion on each failure. <clears throat> The literature today on these issues in neonatology, uh, as we know that very few percent of the studies are, of the, our practices are actually evidence-based. And now quality improvement projects become a very um, a major tool in uh, changing practices. So the literature regarding IVH is now out there. Uh, and the first one who published was Humler, Humler in Ulm, who showed uh, a significant different, de de decrease in the IVH incidence in all gestational age groups and he showed that uh, the result of this very 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 strict bundle that he introduced he did have very high uh, very um, high percentage of the cesarean section uh, umbilical cord uh, clamp uh, milking at that point this was a uh, for 2013, when milking was still um, uh, okay to do. Uh, they gave an antenatal uh, uh, additional dose, single dose of uh, um, steroids, and this protocol showed um, a very good result, as you can see in these graphs. They also measure adherence to the protocol, because this is probably one of the very important issues. It's not enough to say you have to do it, you have to measure whether your team is really doing it. And this is why his results were so good. Uh, I will run through some of the articles. This is a group in uh, in Holland who actually, um, the Linda de Vries uh, uh, group who actually showed a, a, um, a nursing protocol which dealt with the position of the head, elevating to 25 to 30 degrees the bed, how to change diapers and slow IV flushes and very slow removal of the IV blood samples. And uh, this is a nursing and nurses are very good in discipline. Doctors are less good in this. I, I think this is uh, very clear and they showed excellent results in decreasing interventricular hemorrhage, especially in the lower gestational age groups. So this is a protocol for the first three days of life and this is what they had the results. Um, they, they discussed the issue of importance of uh, having the circulation of the, of the brain stable, uh, the U-shaped uh, blood vessels of the venous uh, circulation in the brain and the very fast uh, hemodynamic changes which may, may occur when you withdraw blood. So they actually explain the pathophysiology behind this uh, approach of the degree of the head, position of the head, and the way of changing the diapers. Uh, a single uh, center study in Mount Sinai, actually, unfortunately, they had a very nice, uh, a very well-designed protocol, and uh, they couldn't show any difference uh, of an IVH um, in their study, and it's published in recently in 2021. And the reason they saw, they saw that this happened is because 
they did not measure the adherence to the protocol, although many, many changes uh, did uh, happen in the unit in the regular practice, like uh, they did not do kangaroo mother care for the first three days, but they encouraged and built protocols for hand touching to receive, to have the same result in uh, mother baby contact and breast milk production and all the importance of skin to skin contact that we all know about. Um, in Calgary, in Canada also, the CNN uh, the, uh, database, uh, they actually show uh, a very nice improvement uh, in, in the babies in less than 29 weeks. They did have a very big drop in the incidence of IVH and they were successful. Um, this is a list of studies which most of them, including the California um, qualitative uh, prenatal program who also had involved uh, a very large number of babies, they did showed decrease in the incidence of IVH following those protocols. So the most of the studies in quality improvement methodology showed results. And in, in the Israel also um, embarked on this uh, idea of having a national uh, intervention and they uh, we built a, a whole um, in a national group of uh, five uh, subgroups of people having multidisciplinary uh, representative of OBGs and nurses and doctors. We had uh, read the literature and uh, built some suggested models that we were happy to implement and built a database through a red cup so all the units report to the same red cup and we can audit uh, and uh, um, measure all the protocols how they are doing doing. So um, it's very interesting. I cannot go into the details, but actually we can see all these units, how different they are in practices. And this is just the practice of intubation in the delivery room. We can see that some some centers do intubate um, all babies and others, the red one, uh, you can see that they have 100% of the babies are intubated in the delivery room. And those are baby under the 28 weeks um, um, the group, and you can see those who are mostly not intubating and the only CPAP. So the, also we can see the big changes between the units. And then if we can colorate that specific practice to uh, incidence of, of less IVH, uh, then we are happy and then we will go and do the benchmarking at that unit and see if this is having a good result. We also have the results uh, of all the countries. Actually, confidentiality is extremely important and nobody knows who is center number one, two, three, four, five. I know which is my center, and I can uh, ask uh, the leading uh, committee to tell me who is the center number 24 if I want to go there and learn something, but it's definitely confidential and nobody actually knows. We just can see the big variability, and this is delayed core clamping. You can see some units do not do at all, and some of them do uh, in different percentage. <laughs> what is interesting that with a good data collection form, you actually can see that 50% of the units do only uh, less than 30 minutes of delayed core clamping. So uh, we are not there yet uh, in, in, in really having all the um, uh, whys uh, answered. Why is that that we cannot do longer than 50 seconds? Is this all bad because they, have do, because they do have contraindication or it is some technical problems that can be solved? Um, and... Um, um, this is the results of the Israeli project for Protect Pine Brain, and you can see that during the years that this uh, project was implemented, um, change occurs very slowly. We have a slight decrease, only 50% now from the 20 we started, and still not significant statistically, and we really hope that we will have more understanding um, of, of, of uh, uh, the reasons for that. Uh, uh, many tools which were prepared by the subgroup specialists are actually distributed to all the centers. And this includes films and diagrams and uh, questionnaires for uh, investigation of failure. Uh, and uh, uh, everything is very centralized and also very individualized to each hospital. So um, although the Israeli database, as I said, that does uh, the same uh, approach for the pre infectious prevention uh, topic, we did show already uh, as a whole in Israel a decrease in CLAPSI and BSI, which is very reassuring that actually QI methodology uh, 
uh, works and can improve the general outcomes in most of the hospitals. So as I showed you, the challenges for QI studies are very um, significant. It's a multi in multi-center studies, we, like I showed you that uh, variability is very big and you have to think about how you approach those topics as there is a need to measure adherence to the protocols. It's not enough to put in protocols, but measure whether it is done. Required discipline, reinforcement, and continuous training. New nurses are coming in, new doctors, new residents, uh, and it is very important that you keep up. And the histograms and the numbers that we show to the people uh, will keep the people motivated and in, in, engaged so they don't let the numbers go down. Uh, especially that we show them also how you do it compared to other centers in Israel, and nobody wants to be on the blacklist. All the members have to buy in. That's not a not a cliche. Uh, we are very. Uh, some of the centers would say, "I know, okay, I know very well. You don't teach me what to do. Don't tell me how to withdraw blood. I've done that for 40 years." And they're very um, reluctant to change uh, practices. And this is an issue about how do you make them uh, actually do the same protocol and uh, uh, to make the practice very not variable in your unit. And uh, multifactorial disease are very difficult to, to solve, and they might have also genetic background, but uh, as I showed you, I think that um, um, outcomes and good outcomes can achieve be achieved by this methodology. It's very fast. It's very local sometimes that your unit has a has a discipline, has a, a working group on different topics. And today our nurses and our fellows uh, uh, have smaller or bigger project with the same methodology. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agneta Golan, for the very informative talk on preterm brain injury quality improvement initiative, the way forward. Now it is time for questions and answers. Any questions from audience? I would like to ask uh, this one, not about the uh, few, uh, specifically you mentioned about uh, living literature, few things which we work. One is uh, advancing gestational age. Second is more use of uh, caesarean sections. Then additional dose of beta metamethasone. Then head up position, midline position of head, uh, avoiding boluses, avoiding head low. Uh, a curious omission here was Maxelf, mag mag magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate given to the mother. So because there are two uh, right to opinions coming up from audience that some people feel that giving Maxelf antenatal to mother actually is useful to improve neurological development outcome. Some of us feel that because of Maxelf, sometimes babies are depressed who require more intubation and all. So what is your opinion on this Maxelf to improve these uh, brain injuries? I'm not sure I understood your question, so I try to answer. If I don't answer, you ask again. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you're asking about cesarean section, uh, uh, cesarean section has not been proved to, uh, to decrease the uh, incidence of intraventricular hemorrhage. That's a recently published study, so this is not an indication to do cesarean section. Uh, cesarean section has specific indication, which might be true for bridge position, for twins, but not, not for singletons. Though the Humler group in um Ulm, they did, I think, 90% of their pro their local practice. They said we're doing cesarean sections, and and that's what they did, and they had good results. So whether it is something, and he, but he also had a very, very, very strict deciding when to take the baby out. What is the time that you decide it's better outside than inside? Because some of the some of the uh, insult might take place even before the baby is born. So uh, whether you monitor um, or, or we did not go into the details about the exact uh, uh, de debrief that they do with the OBGs, but the decision of the intervention when the baby is taken out is also very, very strict. So no cesarean section is not preventing 
by literature, by evidence-based medicine, but some centers had, had um, published good results with high uh, rate of uh, cesarean sections. Was it the question? Uh, because they think mag magnesium sulfate, mag -self, magnesium sulfate given to mother, magnesium sulfate given to magnesium sulfate, magnesium sulfate magnesium. is in... Ma magnesium. Magnesium. Magnesium, magnesium neuroprotection has been proved for CP, not for IVH. Yeah. It has nothing to do with IVH. It is in this bundle because it's neuroprotection. But uh, regarding the IVH, it has not been shown to have any influence. But in the long term, CP, it does have. So magnesium is giving now as a, as a routine in preterm deliveries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Something you want to add? Yes, I, I agree. Of the antenatal approaches to decrease um, neonatal hemorrhage. I cannot hear. Volume, please. Can you hear? Very yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, of the antenatal approaches, to decrease neonatal hemorrhage, I think giving antenatal steroids to the mother and giving magnesium are probably the best approaches. Um, and of course, if you can delay the delivery every week of uh, gestation uh, helps the baby to have a lower frequency of hemorrhage. This was a comment, right? Yes. Um, what, what maybe I need to emphasize the importance of the uh, relationship between your perinatal group uh, and discuss uh, uh, issues uh, before birth, when is uh, the right time to give antenatal steroids. Actually, we've seen that with this very high, um, uh, um, we, want, we give very fast. The, the woman is coming in saying she has a little pain and they give immediate antenatal steroids. And if they do not deliver in the eight day period and it's actually a misuse of antenatal steroids. So the conversation between our OBGs to make sure that they don't show 100% uh, uh, um, uh, the protocol is filled, they all have antenatal steroids, but they did not deliver in the eight day or seven day window that is uh, recommended. So the, the debrief before, when, how, who, uh, who is giving the, the, co the, the command, who is giving, now you give the magnesium, now you give the, the antenatal steroids. So this uh, uh, work Working together is extremely important. And I think the fact that the neonatal, Israeli Neonatal Society included the midwives and the OBGs in the, in the group who was working on, on preparing the protocols made uh, very important and the good good uh, uh, positive attitude and not, oh, they, the neonatologists, they do something and, and it's not our thingy, it's their thingy. When they are involved, it's their project too. And I think it's extremely important that this happens. And there are midwife prepared uh, videos on delayed cord clamping in the delivery room, in the, op in the operating room. And it's very, very, very important. And I warmly suggest don't forget the multidisciplinary, um, multifactorial disease have multidisciplinary inputs, and you have to can have them all in uh, in the working group. Hi, Thank can you. I take one question? Any more question? Yeah, one. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Dinesh from uh, Hyderabad. One excellent talk. Did you find any difference in incidence of IVH between preterm AJ versus preterm IUGR? Because we see increased preterm IUGR in India. A lot of them intrauterine growth retarded. Someone who's got abnormal Doppler growth retarded babies who are preterm. Do you find any in difference in incidence of brain injury in the time or abnormal sort of, you know, IVH? <laughs> Sorry, I, I think the sound is not going there. Or, uh, the, huh. Uh, we did not analyze the the SGA babies, small for the stational babies. Um, I think that we all are aware that uh, uh, gestational age is more important in uh, 
in uh, the IVH issue and less the weight of the baby, but uh, we did not sub-analysis this one. I think um, most of the units, so actually, uh, we, I do know that the, from the 26 units in Israel, one of them, which is a more referral center for high-risk pregnancies, they have a very high percentage of, of SGA babies, and I, I don't know if this influences the statistic. I don't know. <coughs> Uh, Dr. Golan Sony here, table number one here, just in the same table where you're sitting here. Uh, one of your beautiful slides was about the different aspects of a bundle of care, uh, antenatal, neonatal, nursing care, everything. Is This is what all the units in Israel are practicing or are you recommending? Because within that, the evidence keeps changing because there, again, it is there endometriosis prophylaxis is that is currently being practiced is this what you're recommending or this is what uh, all the units in israel are using currently or is it just a theme to generate the discussions uh, what is about quality improvement projects that you read all the topics whoever was related you can read the issues of how to ventilate and how to give the, the, how to treat treat PDAs, and the working group establishes a, a recommendation that will be accepted by these experts who are building it. So uh, indometacine is not recommended uh, as a routine. This is how we ended up in our suggestions to our society. It doesn't mean that you, because it's a controversial issue and it does help in the small babies, we are talking about less than 28 weekers. And if you decide that in your specific group you want to sh to have this protocol, and then maybe I know that uh, in the Humler group they they gave endometriosis prophylaxis. They did give endometriosis prophylaxis, which is against evidence-based medicine, right? So um, I think the whole idea about quality improvement methodology is that you as an expert and a group of experts read the literature, decide what is good for you and for unit or your country, and then go for it, measure it, and see if it works. Of course, you do not stop antenatal steroids, which is a not a debatable issue, but there are many, many debatable issues. And I showed you that already in the presence, we do so many different practices in different units. Oh. Oh, good morning, ma'am. Yeah. I'm Dr. Anjali from Bangalore. And uh, I, it was a very ex excellent talk. Uh, I had one question, like especially preterm uh, neonates. We do a lot of sampling and they need a lot of, you know, touch and care. I know your zero touch project that you actually uh, commented about. Can, I, can you just give us some insights on how to reduce this or what were the uh, quality improvement uh, agendas that you actually uh, carry on in that zero touch project? Um, I don't think I can go into all the details. In nursing, for instance, uh, you are asking about suction. It's absolutely not recommended to do any suction um, routinely. So that's absolutely. Now, uh, we do have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, transcutaneous PCO2 monitoring. So if the PCO2 is rising or the baby is fighting the ventilator, then you have to consult the doctor and listen to the lungs. And only if you think that you, you do need a, a suction, you do it. So it's, we do not do routine. It was in the nursing protocols. Um, and there would be, um, the, it has been shown uh, that the uh, suctioning, it's changing the cerebral blood volume and cerebral blood flow terribly and it influences and it increasing the risk of IVH. The bundle, each of them, and you're welcome, I can send it to you, the whole bundle, what exactly we are doing and the literature also that I presented here, most of them have in the, in the article itself, uh, uh, the very um, more detailed uh, explanation of each of the uh, parts of the protocol. Thank you, ma'am. If there are no more questions, we are concluding the session. Thank you, Dr. Agranta Golan.